Hello everyone. Today we're going to be taking a look at logging and debugging in our Rails application. So here you can see I have the edge guide open and they sort of cover logging with a debugging option using the debug gem and then using the web console gem. We're going to cover some of this stuff. We're not going to cover all of it, uh, but this wasn't really covered too well in an up-to-date manner that I could find. So hopefully this will be helpful. We're going to start by just coming into our app, our controllers, our pages controller. This is just the uh, home page for the application. And you can follow along. All you have to do is just sort of put this into similar spots. I'm really only going to be using a home page with a home action. Uh, so I'll just come in here and I'll say, let's do a logger dot info and then rendered the home page. We'll go ahead and we'll save that. We'll exit out with F11 and then I'll run a Rails S to start my server. And then I'll go ahead and refresh the page. And what we're looking for in our console here is this rendered the home page message. So this is just like using puts, except it's going through a bit of a better pipeline. Uh, you can also come over to your explore and down to your log files and your development log. And in here, if I just get rid of this and refresh, it might be a bit easier to read. We can see rendered the home page is being written to this file. You also get all of these other messages afterwards. Uh, and we can take a look at how to deal with those in a second here. But this is the basic idea. You write to the console. You can also write to the development log. So maybe we want to customize this a bit. Let's uh, go ahead and do that. We'll stop the server. We'll come over here and we'll go into our environment.rb inside of our config. So config and then environment.rb. I'll hit F11. And then in here, what we can do is create a new logger. I'll say rails.logger equals logger.new. And then we can do std out to log to the console. I'll go ahead and I'll clear the development log F11. And then I'll type rails s. And now if we uh, actually look inside of our development log, you'll see nothing happens. If I refresh the page, we get some logs in here, one of which says that it rendered the home page. So where is this coming from? Because this is interesting. Uh, we just told it to log to the, um, to the console with the STD out, but why is it logging to the dev log? If we come into our pages controller, we're actually using a logger instance. So if we just come in here and do rails.logger.info, we can then grab this version of the logger. I'll stop the server. I'll come in here. I'll clear out the dev logs. And then I'll go ahead and run a Rails S again. And then I'll refresh. Now you can see we're grabbing the logger. Now we are getting some logs in here. But what's interesting is our rendered the home page isn't logging to our dev log. That's this is coming from a different uh, logger call. But if we come into our console and we try to read this monstrosity, you can see right here it's still doing the rendered the home page. So now our rails.logger is going through our console only. How do we get this to log to a development.log file? Well, instead of doing std out, we could do something like uh, rails.root.join logs rails environment.log and there's some other options here but we're going to go ahead and just skip those for now so this is going to be your total thing just log rails env and log and you could even get rid of your rails.root.join if you'd like and instead you could do something like this do a slash this is a bit more hacky uh, just because you are constructing the path on your own and you generally don't know if you're doing it correctly, uh, but this is going to be the same thing. So this is also going to be inside of our log development.log folder. So let's come over here. Uh, I need to stop the server. Anytime you change something in your environment.rb, it's a good idea to stop the server. It didn't like something that I did there. Uh, no such file or directory log slash development. That means we have an extra slash here. Go ahead and save that and then run a Rails S again. You can go over here and refresh the page. And we still have our rendered the home page here. Uh, but if we come into our development log, we should see that we, uh, let me actually just clear this out and we'll see what we're printing now. 
So now if we refresh, we're getting some logs here where we're selecting the users, the pay customers, and right here we have our rendered the home page. So that's neat. Uh, but what else can we do here? It's, we're kind of back to square one, right? Well, first thing I want to do is I want to clear up these logs. There's too many of them. So we're just going to go ahead and cruise right past this. We're going to say rails.logger.level and set it equal to info. Now, the way this works is you have a list of log levels, which I can find in the edge guide. Uh, and the level you're setting is the minimum level it'll log. So if we're setting this to info, it means we're not going to log debug logs. If we set it to fatal, we're not going to log debug info, warn, or errors. Uh, and the difference here is debug is anything a developer cares about. Info is going to be something the end user cares about. Warn is going to be something went wrong, but we're still good. Error is something went wrong and we're not really good, but we can like keep going. And fatal means you blew up the application. Unknown just means who knows what this log level is supposed to be, uh, but we're going to log it anyways. So in this case, we're just setting it to info. So we'll ignore all of these debug logs. So I'll go ahead and stop the server, run a Rails S. And now if I refresh the page, and I'm going to hit enter a couple times just so we can see this, you'll see we have one, two, three, four logs being spit out here. So it is immediately a lot more readable. If we refresh this page, this is still being spammed with all of this nonsense. And that really can't be helped. But if we uh, clear this out and then come into our pages controller, we set this to be debug, we'll save this, we'll come into our development log, and then we'll refresh the page. And now if we try and do a control F for rendered, oops, rendered the home page, it's not here. If we change this back to a info, we can then save it and refresh one more time. And then we'll come into our development. And then in here we can do a rendered. You can already see we have five results instead of a multiple of two. So we know it's going to be in here and you can see right here, we're now rendering the home page. So that's just what your log levels can do for you. Uh, the other thing we can do is we can add in a formatter for our date and time because these are kind of hard to read. So let's just do that. We'll say rails.logger.datetime format, and then we'll do a year, month, day, hour, minute, second, just like that. And then we, uh, well, it's a bit of a spoiler, but we'll just go ahead and we'll, we'll run this, refresh the page. And now here you can see what this looks like. It's the year, the month, the day, and then the hour, the minute, and the second with some additional, I think these are microseconds down to six decimal places. Uh, six, yeah. So that is pretty good. Uh, sometimes you want to format it like this. Sometimes you want to format it a different way. It depends on what you need, but this is how you can do your formatting. Uh, the next thing we can do is say rails.logger.formatter is equal to, and then we'll pass in a proc block, and then we can build a string. So our date time is just our date time right here. Our severity is our log level right here. And our message is just whatever we're logging. Our prog name is just going to be a special block. And we're actually going to put this in front of our message here. And just to make things a bit more readable, I'm going to break this up with some pipes. I'm just going to put pipes around all of this stuff. And then we can save this. So we're just giving it a nice little pipe delimited format here. Go ahead and stop the server because I changed the environment.rb. And then I'll go ahead and refresh. And here you can see our new format. We have our time, our info, our prog block is empty because we're not doing anything with our prog name. And then we have whatever the message is. So right here we can see we rendered the home page. Come into our development log and we uh, look for rendered the home page, wherever that may be. You can see right here we have our pipes around it with the info, etc. So how do we use the rendered the homepage stuff? Well, if we come into our controller here, what we'll do is we'll just throw in a set of parentheses, a do block, and then a end block. And then in here, we can just do a test. And then we'll exit out of this with F11. We can come in here and refresh the page again. And now if we, uh, wherever this may be, if we come down here, you can see we have our date our info and then test is in here and then we rendered the home page. So now whatever's inside of our do block ends up being 
uh, our message and then whatever's inside of our parentheses ends up being our prog name. Maybe you want this to be your home method, then you just set it to say home or your home action and then you got home wherever this is being uh, logged from. So right here, your home. You can do some extra logic. Maybe you grab whatever the caller is. This is gonna be pretty long, uh, but I'll just go ahead and do this because it's funny. Now, if we refresh, you get the entire call stack whenever you log this. You can see info and then here's your entire call stack for everything uh, that's in here. So you have some options. This is gonna require a lot of customization. Uh, really depends on what you want. But okay, so let's come into our, uh, not our development, our environment.rb, and let's come down here and we'll do rails.logger.info, and then we'll say uh, start, uh, we'll, we'll make this first one environment, and then we can do a uh, rendered, not rendered the home page. We can say we started the application, started the Rails app. And then we can put our logger to good use. So now whenever we start the Rails app, it will log out a info level message saying that we started the Rails application. So let's come into our development log, come down to the bottom. You can see here environment development started the Rails app. Okay, so that is our logger set up and configured. We now have these messages being logged. Let's go ahead and let's stop this being the caller and instead we'll just say this is the home action or we can even do something like this is the pages home. Just something useful that we can see in the future. We'll go ahead and we'll refresh and we'll see our pages home action right there. Now, next thing, uh, we can come in here and if we want to debug this, we can just type some random letters we can then refresh the page and we get this all too familiar error page. And then in here, I can just check what the rails.logger. Uh, level is. I can see it's level one, which means it's info because it starts at zero for debug, one for info, etc. cetera. Uh, we can check that by just doing something like uh, logger colon colon info, oops, info. You can see that's one. But okay, I don't want to have to do this. Maybe I want to open a debug console, but not in such a like weird way where it just goes to an error page. Let's just come in here and let's just type console. Hit control S to save it. Come over here and refresh the page. And now I have a console while I can still look at the page. So now I want to grab the current underscore user and I can see that that's me. I can also zoom in if I need to. So the console's nice. If we come into our Explorer, scroll down, go to gem file, and inside of our gem file, you can see you have your web console gem. Maybe you wanna do something a little bit different though. Uh, we can find another gem, and this one's gonna allow you to do better errors. So we'll come over here in our development, we'll paste in better errors, and then we uh, also need the uh, binding of caller gem. We'll go ahead and stop the server. We'll run a bundle install, and then we can run a Rails S to start the server again. I'll go ahead and I'll refresh. We still have our console here. Let's come over to our pages controller. Let's get rid of this console, and instead let's just type ASDF, which is just absolute nonsense. I'm trying to break the application. And now I'm gonna go ahead and refresh. And here you can see what the better errors gem does for you. So you can see over here, we have our application frames, which is just our entire uh, stack until we got here. And the last one we had was a actual page. So our pages controller home action. Over here, we can see where it broke. We can see what the request parameters were, and we can see the uh, rack session and all of that other good stuff. If I wanna check something, what's my current user? I can just go ahead and run that and it works as we would expect. So this is really nice to have. Uh, it, of course, it's nice to have both of these. Sometimes you really just need your console. You don't need an entire error page, but if you do get an error page, it's nice to have options. And personally, I do like better errors. Now, the other thing we can do is we can come out of here. We can go into our actual views and our pages and our homepage. And then inside of our homepage, maybe we want to check some info on the current user. So we'll come down here to user info. Right below user info, I'll open up some Ruby code and I'll just say debug the current underscore user. Go ahead and save that, refresh the page. And now you can see we have this entire uh, 
set of text here, this wall of text. What we have here is our Ruby inspect for our object. So we have the concise attributes. We know that the, uh, attri that the database currently tells us it has a ID because it's a user, an email, an encrypted password, a reset token, a reset at, remember at, blah, 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 nobody cares. We have a set of views, a role, a first name, a last name, a address, ID, city, country, subscription, status, etc. Now we created a lot of these over the over, over the period where we've done this uh, series, but you sort of get the idea. So if you just run your debug, you can pretty much get some pretty useful info there. Now if I come over to my portfolios, I have three portfolios here that I can drag and drop as needed. Uh, maybe I want to, instead of rendering a debug here, I want to come into my portfolio section and inside of my projects and my index where I have these at projects. Uh, maybe I just want to do a debug for the project. So for each of these projects, I want to render a debug for the project. Let me F11. We can see here this first one has an ID, a title, a link, a created at, updated at position, etc. Second one looks the same. Third one looks the same. So that's pretty neat. Uh, what else could we do? We could grab the project dot, uh, what is it? Project dot title. Let's do that. Go ahead and refresh. Now we can see that the title for the first one is test one, second one is test two, third one is test three. So that is uh, another option for you. Now, if we come over to the edge guide and we scroll up, you can see that we've covered the logger, we've covered some of the debugging, we've covered some of the web console stuff. There's a whole bunch of stuff here that you can really look into. Uh, it's pretty powerful. The logger especially, I would suggest looking into because I think it's honestly pretty underrated in terms of a debugging tool. Uh, logging your messages in a meaningful way is a godsend if you're working in a larger production application. Uh, I think I put a poll out a couple months ago where I asked what the number one way to debug was. And surprisingly, logging was just like nowhere on the radar. And number one was I'm going to put some stuff. And number two was I'm going to go use a debugger. So I, I would suggest looking into it. Uh, even just your basic Rails log that runs by default, it has a lot of useful info if stuff breaks. It's a place I frequently go to when I'm making these tutorials. So it's just something to keep in mind. Um, there are other options, of course, and there's other things you can do, but I would suggest looking into some of these because they can be uh, pretty helpful. But yeah, that's going to do it for this tutorial. Hopefully this was helpful and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.